Hey guys, Vikas over here and this is your genius. Guys, today I am with a new project around Wemos. We will make a power outlet that can be controlled by using internet. And as cloud server, we are going to use thingspeak.com. So the way it will work is, so guys over here we are having three important things. That is the Wemos module itself, which is connected to different loads. The thingspeak cloud server that is acting as an intermediate between our mobile devices or web interface and the Wemos and which is actually storing the status of the loads and thirdly we are having the mobile or web interface and over here we are not going to use any mobile application or you can say web interface developed by us instead we are just going to use simple http get calls from our browser so if you are interested you can do so and which is uh, pretty much easier if you are familiar with android or web development the, and coming on to how it works which is uh, like uh, the ms model first sends one http get request that is requesting for the status of different loads to the thingspeak server and in response it gets one json string that contains the different load status which are connected to the wemos module and as this is a json string we need some json parser inside our wemos module which will help us to parse the status of different loads and on the other side uh, let's say you want to change the load status you can do so by invoking one HTTP GET request with the changed flow status to the to thingspeak.com, which will actually change the load status. And when the Wemos module again request for the different load status, it will get in JSON response. Over here, thingspeak.com is totally used as just intermediate between our mobile devices and the Wemos, as because we can't directly access the Wemos module without using any public IP or other concepts directly from our devices using the internet so and one more thing it also stores the latest status of the devices so guys let's check out if this works and being said that let's get started guys so guys let's first check out the schematic and we'll see how to connect the components that we are going to use in our project so over here the main thing is the wemos that we have connected and around it or like other components are connected the wemos is powered by 5 volt supply that we are getting by using one buck converter that we have connected from the 12 volt supply that we are providing to the release over here and this 12 volt we are getting from the 230 volt mains by using some adapters or you can use uh, like SMPS modules for that. Now coming on to relays, relays are being driven by Umos module by using ELN2803 relay driver that is nothing but having Darlington pairs inside it. So one end of the ELN2803 that is the input side is connected to the D1, D2, D3, D4 pins of Umos. Actually we can connect any way you are interested in and the other end of the ELN2803 is connected to the relays. And over here, you just need to take care if you are connecting your inputs to in 1, in 2, in 3, and 4, you have to connect the relays to the respective output pins. And other side of the relays are com made common and are connected to 12 volt supply. Then uh, we need to connect the ground pin of ULN2803 to the common ground pin. With that, we are having four LEDs that shows status of different sockets that we have received from the Thamesplit server. So if the LED glows, this will show that particular load or particular socket is on. If it is not glowing, then it simply means it is turned off. So and over here, I have connected four LEDs by using some register to the Wemos module. And over here, I have used 120 ohm registers in series with the LEDs. And those LEDs are again connected to D0, D5, D6 and D7 pin. And over here, no relay is mapped to a particular LED so it all, always depends upon the sketch you are using and the physical connections that you are making but you can think of like LED 1 is for the relay 1 and LED 2 for LED 2 and so on so with Wemos we don't need any other connection apart from the LEDs and the ELN 203 so let's see how to connect and assemble everything physically and after that we'll check out Arduino sketch and we'll see how to connect to internet uh, and we'll see how to control the loads from thingspeak.com 
Uh, so guys, as I said, we are going to make this project around Wemos module. And to power everything, I'm going to use this LED driver module that is rated at 12 volt and 1 amps. And to power the Wemos module, I'm going to use this LM2596 based buck converter that is going to give an output of 5 volt. And along with that, I'm going to use 4 LEDs to show the status of the sockets. And coming onto the sockets, I have used 4 sockets with one wooden panel that I have already mounted. And these 4 sockets will be controlled from the internet. And to control this, I am going to use 4 relays and over here I have used mechanical ones instead of solid state relays. And to control them by using Wemos, I am using this ULN283 and this is like the connections are made. So guys, let's connect everything which I am going to do off camera. And over here you can see I have connected everything, the relays, the Wemos module, the buck converter, the power supply module and I have just fitted it in the back side of the wooden panel where I have mounted the four sockets and out of it I am just getting two wires that I will be connecting to the 230 volt main supply. So that's with the that's all with this physical connections and all. So let's get to the Arduino ID and we'll see how to program it. So guys as I said earlier we'll be controlling our devices by using ThinkSpeak. So over here get into thinkspeak.com and if you have not logged in already you just need to create one account if you don't have and simply log in into your account after that get into channels uh, click on my channels or you can simply get, uh, click this channels also and over here create a new channel now give it a name let's say i'll give it iot panel then you can add description if you want then you can add the fields or number of different parameters that you want to access from ThinkSpeak or you want to control from ThinkSpeak. So for my case it is 4 because I am having 4 sockets only in my panel. So I will just give it some names like socket 1 then I will enable the second pin and that is socket 2. So uh, over here as I am having 4 sockets only. I have just used 4 fields over here. So if you are having more than 4 or if you are having less than 4 then you just need to consider that much fields only. So then after you can add metadata tags. If you want to make, make it public you can use make public and all. Will not get into that and straight away click on save channel. Now we need to copy few things over here like the channel id. So just paste it. This is the channel id then get into api keys and we need to copy the read and write api keys so first one is the write api key so we just need to use these three things in our sketch so over here that's that much only if you want to go through documentation for apis and all you can go through the documentation over here inside support but for this tutorial as we are using the rest api I have given the links and the format that you need to use to call different services of ThinkSpeak. Like if you want to control a channel or if you want to get uh, like the data or the latest data from the channel. So let's uh, close it for the time being and just get over to my GitHub account and GitHub repository. And over here you just need to copy this code and for this actually i have uh, provided the link down below in the description or you can create yourself if you are interested in that but for the time being for this tutorial i am going to use the code that i have provided in my github account so let's open up arduino and again as i said earlier we are going to use wemos for this so if you are new to this like uh, how to use wemos with arduino id you can ch you can check out my earlier tutorial on this uh, for which I'll be providing the link down below in the description. So if you are uh, like aware of uh, how to use Wemos and ESP8266 best boards with Arduino, you are, you are good to go. Now just paste the code over here and on the tools I have selected Wemos D1 R2 Mini. That's what I'm going to use and I have selected the port that is connected to the Wemos. 
now in the sketch i just need to change few things like the ssid that corresponds to your network then the password for that now over here i we just need to change few parameters on url that corresponds to our channel that is channel id and the read api key and over here for this actually how to get this url and all you can get over to thingspeak and on the documentation you can get into channel and charts api and click on rest api and over here uh, let's uh, get into like channel feeds and you can uh, like select like if you want to update or you want to get a channel feed you can visit the respective urls so you can do that yourself uh, i suppose and over here i'm just going to replace the things uh, the values that i copied for channel id and read and write api so first i'll copy the channel id then i'll copy this uh, like a read api key and coming on to the url over here just i have mentioned along with the api key and the channel id i have mentioned results equals once so this will just return me the latest feed in the channel instead of getting all the values that is available on the channel i'll just have one only in the returned json file and as the api is returning us json data to pass the data i have used the library arduino json so if you have not installed this library onto your arduino id you can simply do that by visiting into sketch then include library then get into manage libraries and just to wait a bit till it gets synced now under search you can simply search for json and you will find the arduino json library over here so as i have installed it is not showing me the install button but you just need to click the install button like this one over here so that will install the arduino json library onto your arduino id now getting into the code and over here i have defined the pin those correspond to the sockets or the led for the particular socket so over here i have mentioned d1 d5 d4 d0 d3 as we saw in the schematic so i have just given it some name so that you can easily refer from our sketch so after that these are some wi-fi credential and the url as we saw earlier then after we have i used request time the 30000 so that it will be for 30 seconds only and we'll get to that what is that then after that i have mentioned something exit t equals one that will help us to clean or clean shut down the perfect client we'll get into that again and simple variable over here and over here i have mentioned the static ip addresses these are useful if you are using a static ip for your network i've just mentioned it over here but uh, for the time being i'm using dscp only so if you require to use static ip you can go ahead with that then after that i have I used something called as dynamic json buffer that is for the json parsing then getting into the setup we have used initialize and all of so first it will initialize like it will connect to wi-fi and all after that it will make the leds and as well as the loads off by default when it starts off so getting into initialize you will see something like we have created uh, like made serial port open like we have initialized the serial port with certain board right after that we have made the pins corresponding to different loads output then after we have some delay we are trying to connect to the particular network so over here you will see wi-fi dot begin with ssid and password this will connect to the particular network you have defined on your ssid then it will check for if wi-fi is connected otherwise it will just wait for some time until it gets connected then after it will just print out the ip address of your remote model over here so that's all with uh, the initialize function and the other function is something called all of where we have made every pin low when the board initializes after that uh, we have one more function that is change status that takes the load number and the new status that has to be given to the particular load so i have used simple switch case over here to control particular load so you can check that out how these things are working over here now getting into the loop where the actual thing happens you can see over here we have used something called millis minus request time that means it will only come true after every 30 second so we are uh, just requesting the server to give us the latest status in every 30 second 
so if you are ch making any change to your loads on like server or something that will take like a maximum of 30 seconds to get reflected on the panel then after that we are just operating the request time then we are just having some print statements we are creating a wifi client that will connect to the port 80 of the host that we have defined that is over here that is api.thingspec.com so if your server works with different uh, like port or if you are using different host for this you can use it over here you can change over here now after that we are having some print statement and after that we are using client.print and we are over here using get call instead of post so you can go with get or post but uh, if you are going for post you will have different parameters with client.print then it's a simple uh, like get statement over here with url and the host to the http version we are using now after that we are having simple client.available equals to zero this what it does is it waits until we get response from the server but uh, if the server takes more than 30, 30 seconds this will simply stop the client and it will exit so if you, if this is uh, not coming true means we are getting data from the server it will then read client.available until the data is available it will simply st uh, like store the red data into a string that is line and we are reading the data until we find then after that we are just uh, filtering out the JSON data or JSON response from the server by tracking the in and out curly brackets then after that I am just printing out the JSON data and we are over here passing the JSON data so if you want to know the, how the JSON structure looks like with the response uh, from ThingsPick you can just check it out with your browser otherwise you will, uh, in the serial port it will be printed out now over here I have just used these things to parse out and change the status accordingly according to the values of field 1, field 2, field 3 and field 4 and after that it is simply uh, like clearing out or it will stop the Wi-Fi client so that's all with the code so let's upload it to our Wemos and see if this works I just need to save it now when you are compiling for the first time this might take a bit of time now let's open up the serial port over here and it is trying to connect to the network it has successfully got the IP and over here you can see that the JSON file shows uh, the fits as null because we don't have any data right now now to control the loads you can use the API again the right API over here uh, which actually I have given in my github repository so get into the readme file otherwise you can simply get it from the documentation of rest api so i'll just get into this now over here copy this url and as i said i am having four fields over here so if you are having different load you can change accordingly now just change with change the right api key with the API key that we have got from our channel and I am making all the loads off now let's see if in the latest uh, JSON response the fields getting changed till now it has not received uh, so let's wait for one more iteration yeah you can see over here it has responded with field 10, field 20, field 30 and field 40. Now if you want to change the load status, you can change the value that the field one uh, field corresponds. Like uh, if you want to change for load 1 or the socket 1, I'll just uh, use 1 instead of 0. And you can see the load status will get changed. Now ch let's uh, get into the Arduino terminal and see if the value is getting changed till now again it has not received so wait for 30 second in host case now I can see it has responded with field 1 value of 1 and accordingly the particular socket or LED will get turned on 
and getting into the right or the control URL, you can call this URL from any app that you want. Like you can make your own Android app or you can use some apps. Those allows you to make HTTP calls and over here that is get call. So you just need to simply copy this URL and you can add your buttons or something. And whenever you visit this URL with field one, field two, field three and field four values. And according to the values mentioned over here, like one zero zero or whatever that uh, the the loads will be controlled accordingly depending upon if it is one or it is zero if it is one it will get turned on if it is zero it will get turned off so other than one zero one and zero it will not accept any value so you have to be careful about that so so that's all with this guys i hope you have enjoyed this and if so please hit the thumbs up button and if you have not subscribed yet you can definitely subscribe to my channel for latest updates so see you next time with my next video till then goodbye